Hi guys, welcome to February. Now, for many, January is a month of disappointment, which makes it really hard to be excited about a month associated with love. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to turn this ship around. That's why I called it Fill It Up February. We're going to come at each day like Jerry from Cheer, Matt talking us every time we open our mouths. Yay! Who doesn't need their own personal Jerry? I love that guy. Gosh. Something I didn't love, though, for a long time? Me. We couldn't afford for me to go back to work, so I stayed home. And I knew that I wasn't like the other stay-at-home moms. I felt like I was surrounded by all kinds of stay-at-home moms that loved it. And this is probably why I remember so vividly my oldest kid's first Valentine's Day at preschool. She came home with a sack full of elaborate handcrafted cards with those puffy stickers and shit. And immediately I felt ashamed of the dollar store cards we taped suckers to the night before. My daughter took all of those really nice cards apart. All the puffy stickers had to take them off and try to put them back on and put them all back together again. Because you see, she's always loved crafting. And... I just felt like shit, man. These parents had all found time to craft Valentines with their kids. My kid would love that. Why don't I do things like that? What is wrong with me? I'm not qualified for this job. My kid deserves something better than what I can give her. Standing in line, I drop off the next day. I heard two moms talking smack about the Valentines uh, being a chance for people to show off who could afford nannies. As they kept talking, I was like, oh my God, I'm not deficient. They have parents who are doing that with their kids and nannies. Probably weren't even doing them with the kids. They were doing them while the kids were at school. <gasps> Why did I let my brain go there? No wonder they were all so neat and nice. Kids didn't do that. That was six years ago. This past October, we bit the bullet and got a nanny ourselves. The kids call her Auntie Joy. Auntie Joy is a hardcore crafter. She's good with discipline. She cooks. She loves the kids. We have sit-down dinners now that is non-negotiable. She is everything I'm not and everything I thought I needed to be back when I became a parent. She goes to Target and buys organizing thingies and baskets, you know, and the house has never been cleaner, more welcoming, or more organized, especially when I was a stay-at-home mom. I love Auntie Joy more than I could possibly express, and I don't feel deficient. I've efficiently outsourced all the things that I'm bad at. The kids are getting the things that they want, the things that they need, and the things that I have not ever been able to provide because I'm not genetically hardwired that way. Now, I can focus on my gaps and feel bad about myself like I used to do when I first became a stay-at-home mom, or I can focus on the fact that I filled those gaps and feel good about the fact that I am now an entrepreneur. Even though I don't have a paycheck and I'm not actually paying for Auntie Joy, we are in a, a real, my, what I was able to contribute was budget management so that we could pay off our student loans while I was at home. It is a conscious choice each and every day to choose that latter narrative. And that has nothing to do with joy and everything to do with the shame that I carry for being a Wharton mom instead of a craft brigade, craft brigade mom. I'm going to encourage you this month in those moments when you focus on what you aren't doing or what you can't do and feeling bad to catch yourself and pivot to a different narrative that makes you feel good. As cheesy as it sounds, this is where love comes from. And you've probably done it in reverse. Think back to previous Valentine's Days. Every Valentine's Day that you had is in high school, in college, whenever you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend that you're supposed to sp spend it with and expectations about what that day was supposed to be. That's when you would give the person you were dating the most generous possible read. Especially when they told you that they didn't do Valentine's Day and flowers are a waste of money and it is a Hallmark manufactured holiday and it's not real. And yeah, like I haven't said I love you yet because I'm not that serious. And why are you pressuring me? It's just a made up day on a calendar. It's just any other day. I remember finally breaking up with one of them, telling him, look, I'm not a mom, I'm not Jesus, I'm not Santa Claus, I'm not a saint, so Valentine's Day is the only holiday I get. This is my day, and if you do not give it to me, I will take it elsewhere. And I did, and that was the last Valentine's Day I ever made excuses for anyone who hadn't really been showing me that they cared. It was the last time I was going to give them a more generous read than they deserved. So why am I going to do anything less for me? Why am I not going to treat myself as kindly as I treated my ex-boyfriends? Oh my God, why would you? 
There are so many ways you can spend $30 in this economy, and we are grateful you brought it here to the Fitness Protection Program. Give yourself credit for being here, for hitting the reset button, and get ready for a really great month. We have two workouts and maintain anti-joy, Natch, a series of repeats that I love almost as much as I love Auntie Joy herself. And Etsy Shop, where we can support crafty bitches all over the globe and doing super cool craft shit that some of us suck at that we're not hardwired to do. Now, do I suck for needing an Etsy shop or do I rock for supporting stay-at-home moms, side gigs, and small businesses online? I think it's obvious. In Rebuild, we have Bottle Ship, which celebrates the love of slow, steady work that is richly rewarded. My uncle used to build those crazy elaborate ships in a bottle all winter. I never understood it. It is tedious, precise, slow work, kind of like crafting, that just never interested me at all. And if that is how you feel being in Rebuild this month, I see you. I've been there. Give yourself credit for doing the work that is not your first choice. And I know it's hard not to focus on the gaps or the reason that you're here if this wasn't your first choice. But whenever you do, Pivot to the wins. You're doing all the right things. Ships and bottles take forever. Some processes cannot be circumvented or shorted, but that does not mean that you're doing anything wrong. You're coached. You are loved. Let's keep winning in life because you ain't stopped yet all February. <laughs>